Morning, guys. Uh, yeah. France, four years ago, scrums really laid the platform for the victory against England in the World Cup final. Um, what's your view on the England pack and scrumming this time around, four years on? I know you've played them a couple of times in between, but at a World Cup. Is it still... Yeah, there's been fewer scrums in some of the games you've played. Uh, the, some of the teams have taken scrums away from you. Do you expect that to happen again this weekend? Morning, everyone. Um, no, I don't think... Um, on your last question, I don't think they'll take it away in any sense. Um, four years ago was a good day for us, but that's in the past. Um, and I think Set Piece will play a massive role this weekend. And obviously, for me, scrumming is one of my primary jobs. And, um, yeah, I think it'll be a very important part in the game. And hopefully it works out well for us. Eben, sorry, hi. Um, you played an amazing game last week, um, personally and as a team. How do you ensure you hit the same heights two weeks running? Is there a danger you can drop off a little? Yeah, um, I think for us, uh, we approach as a World Cup semi-final. Uh, we've got all, all four teams left, got two more hurdles until they can claim the trophy. And I think that's more than enough motivation to not let your form dip or your performance dip or anyone go on a low. So for, for us, that, that will be our motivation. Uh, it's a World Cup semi-final. It's the biggest prize in rugby you can win. So I think the guys will, will keep on me focused. Obviously, we know all know how physical and intense that game was against France. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's in the past and no one can ever write about you what happened in the past. It's about what we can bring this coming Saturday against England. And yeah, we'll be focused on that. Yeah, Ben, uh, Jan de Koning. Um, I know this is a team sport, and obviously the focus is on the team. But there's also uh, healthy in internal or one-on-one um, -on -one rivalries, and your, your rivalry with Itoje is, is quite well documented. Um, talk to us about that. I mean, it's, it's, it's something you guys have, uh, have a beer afterwards, but on the field, you guys are serious rivals. Um, yeah, I, I think... Like you say, it's not, not an individual thing, it's, it's a team thing. So um, I don't think we go, we go out to just go one-on-one -on -one against each other. I think it's it's the Supreme Ops versus, versus England. And obviously in, in the game, a few one-on-one -on -one, uh, battles will happen. Um, obviously a guy like France will scrum against their loose head, which will be sort of an individual battle, but it's still, they've got a whole pack behind them. And so do we. So. I think it's 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 us against them, and yeah, we we're not at all focused on the on the individuals. Um, sometimes there will be one or two, but for us, it's about the spring box this coming Saturday, and, and and we're focusing to bring that to the to the game and to go as a unit uh, to them. Open. Hi. Um, South Africa beat England so convincingly in the in the last World Cup final. How is it? Um, is it difficult not to subliminally think you're the better team than them, or is there something in the English psyche, the way they respond to a setback, which kind of puts you on edge? Yeah, I think you always want to respond of the setback, and obviously, 2019 was a, was a big one. It was it was a World Cup final. Um, we know that they'll they'll be still thinking about that, and everyone like you guys remind us of that uh, every now and then. Um, but like a, my previous uh, answer was, it's a it's a World Cup semi for us. Um, it's two more hurdles, and this is very important to get to that last hurdle. So so we'll be focused on that, and obviously we know how physical and aggressive they will come at us on on Saturday. But um, yeah, we we will go in exactly the same fashion. We'll we'll give it to them. Damien, uh, good morning, good morning, gentlemen. Um, Damien, just take us through the feeling of just playing in an unchanged box side. It's been a rarity, and understand it so in the World Cup here, where there's needed to be chopping and changing um, to test various combinations. But this is, the, if I'm not mistaken, this is the first unchanged team of the year. Just talk us through that feeling of continuity and how it feels. 
morning, everyone. Um, yeah, obviously, there's a bit more confidence, um, considering we are, we are unchanged. Um, but within saying that, if we had changed a few um, guys around this week, I think there would still be a lot of confidence in the squad. Uh, the way we train and the way we put each other, the the way we put each other under pressure during the week, um, each guy in their position uh, is just as good as the guy starting. So, um, yeah, I don't think um, if there were changes, it would have been much different. But um, yeah, we we obviously can take a lot of confidence out of last week's performance, um, and hopefully we can replicate it on the weekend. Uh, good morning, gentlemen. This is also just for Damien. Uh, what are you expecting from England uh, today? We heard it's going to be a tough physical uh, scrum is going to be important. What are you expecting? Yeah, um, like France and Yemen said, it's obviously going to be very physical, uh, very intense, obviously like a knockout game is. Um, and obviously, I think it's probably raining on the weekend, so I think there will be quite a lot of kicks. Um, uh, probably a lot of set piece battles as well. Um, hopefully, the bats can get some ball as well. I think we might do a bit more watching on the weekend, but um, we obviously have to stay focused on the game and stay in the moment in the game. But yeah, I think the way v the way England have been playing, um, they will obviously bring something different on Saturday for might be faced against France. But we'll be more than prepared for that, and um, we're all looking forward to that challenge. Good morning, Jinwa. Um, 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 even can I just ask you? Obviously, I heard what CI had to say about you. He had probably the most, the best words about you as a, as a teammate, as a friend, as a player. Can I ask you? Are, are you a very demanding person in the squad? Do you expect high standards from your colleagues around you in the match, in the build-up to a match? Um, or and is this at automatic for you being the most senior player? Are you? Is it because of your seniority in the team that you are so demanding? And then just, Damien, can I ask you? Um, this past weekend. Although Bongi Manambi was the player of the match, there was a lot of talk about how your teammate, your colleague, um, Jesse Creel, played. You talk about continuity in the team. A couple of months ago, it would have been a Valier at fullback, it would have been a Lucanio Am next to you, perhaps. Are you confident with Jesse, for instance, next to you and the rest of the team in the back line? There's a, there's a few young, young and new players in, that, in the back line? Yeah, I'm confident. <laughs> Obviously, I've played with Jesse a lot. But I'm confident with all the guys around me in the squad, and I'm sure they're all, all confident with each other around um, the squad as well. So, like I said, I don't, I don't think whoever, or whoever plays on the weekend, whoever gets selected, um, the way we train and the way we put each other, other under pressure during the week, um, yeah, you know, we just want the best for each other. Um, and obviously, it's it is unfortunate that some guys do have to miss out on the weekends, but. Um, no matter who plays, we'll always do our best to give the best pictures during the week to make sure that um, what we face, what we think we're going to face on the weekend against our position, um, we've seen that picture uh, a lot more in the week before we've seen it on Saturday. So, um, yeah, no matter who plays, um, I think everyone will just feel comfortable around each other and um, they'll just get on with their job and, and sacrifice um, to make sure that the team does better before the individual. Sorry. Yeah, Jesse was incredible. Um, and a lot of other guys were incredible as well. Um, I know he had a standout performance. Jesse was very good. Yevon was very good. Um, there's also a lot of work that goes unnoticed um, from guys in the in the forward back, especially in the front row. So, um, yeah, Jesse was exceptional. And I always enjoy playing with him. And um, we'll, we'll need to back that performance up again on Saturday. And I think Jesse will back it up. And... I know um, the whole forward pack will, will stand up and, and, and everyone will put their hands up and, and be ready for the challenge against England. Um, yeah, just your, your question on the driving the standards. I think uh, obviously in the squad is 33 players and I think Coach Jog mentioned the other day is the, is the 33 best players in South Africa and I think we each have a job when we're at our club to drive standards uh, like France will have the Stormers or or they will have at this uh, Japanese club and, and meet the Sharks. So when, when we get together, those 33 players, it's, it's every player in the squad is driving standards and that, that just makes it so much easier for, for the coaches who expect that of us. And a guy like Sia make, makes his task be, be, uh, easier. So, yeah, it's, it's not up to the captain or, or the senior players to drive standards. It's a, it's a thing, uh, it's a common goal around the whole squad to, to do that. 
A question for Eben. Um, Sia was talking to, about you as the enforcer of the team uh, just before. Is, is, is it a real, do you feel that as a real responsibility of yours to lead the, the, the team's physical challenge every week? Um, that's the first question. And secondly, in leading that challenge, you were asked about Mario earlier. Who are, who are the, the toughest individuals that you've had to come up against in that regard? Um, yeah, I think for from a physical aspect, I think as a as a forward back of the spring box, um, I mean, one guy can't can't really enforce anything without uh, the other eight. Um, so I think it's we as spring box, as a pack, we try and do that every game, uh, not singling out any, any individuals. I think each one has got his role in the team, whether it's in the scrum or the line out or, or on carry or defense. So, yeah, we, we're just working together, I, I would say. And then singling out individuals, uh, I, don't, I don't like doing that. So, yeah, I'm going to not answer that question. Uh, one, one for Evan, please. Um, Maro, it's told you admits that his, his form wasn't the best in kind of November and September. Um, yeah, I um, I haven't watched too many of the games. Uh, obviously, obviously he's a he's a good player, um, and it's an old saying that form is temporary and class is forever. So yeah, like I don't want to comment too much on his form, but if he thinks he's he's much better now than he probably is. Uh, hi there. I think I'm right in saying all three of you would have played in the semi-finals in 2015 and lost to the All Blacks. I was wondering if you could maybe reflect a bit on how that loss shaped your attitude towards those matches and the next couple of times you played them afterwards. Yeah, I'll go um, first. I haven't answered the question. Um, I think, you know, it was obviously the three of us, what were we, 24 um, that time? Yeah, I think so. And uh, it was uh, obviously... Um, disappointing game to fall out of the World Cup um, at the semi-final, and I think it was it, it was a building experience, um, learning from that, um, and I don't think you can single out one game so far back, um, but yeah, I think it was a obviously it built um, experience. We were young; it was our first World Cup and hopefully learn from that. Question for Ewan. Do you derive as much pleasure beating England than, say, France or Italy? So I say again? Do you derive as much pleasure beating England than, say, France or, or Italy or any other team for that matter? I, I think... Um a knockout stages of a World Cup. Uh, I don't think you doesn't matter who you play against. Uh, it will bring so much happiness. I think when we, when we beat France this weekend, everyone was so happy. And, and just get, knowing you, you've got another shot. You've got another week to prepare, and, and you're not uh, back home. So um, whether it was England or Fiji, um, our preparation wouldn't have changed. Our desperation for, to win the game wouldn't have changed. Damien, you've played uh, three semi-finals for and been across three continents in that time. Could you just tell us what European rugby did to help your game? And could you also just, right at the very end, just say one, maybe two lines about RG Snyman, who has fought so hard to be here th through injury? Um, yeah, I've obviously been lucky to play a lot of rugby in South Africa, um, in my own province at the Stormers. And obviously spending two years, or one year at Panasonic, also um, a few months at Tete after the 2015 World Cup. And then obviously at Munster as well. Um, but yeah, I, f I feel, yeah, obviously I, I got my opportunity um, in Cape Town. Um, but I learned a lot um, in Japan and at Munster. I think they're bigger, they, they put a big emphasis on, on skill um, and, uh, and developing players. Um, skillfully um, and I, th I think that has improved my game personally I put a lot of effort into that when I was in Japan and at Munster and then yeah obviously RG um, yeah I was at Munster with him for two years uh, I think in those two years we probably played five minutes together 
um, which was quite unfortunate. Um, I was really looking forward to playing with him consistently um, in the league. Um, but obviously injuries happen and that's all part of the game. And yeah, he just had, I think, two years of bad luck, of a bad run. And credit to Munster, I think they, they, they offered him a, a new contract after his second ACL and um, they stuck with him and they backed him and he's come good. Um, he's worked very hard. He's playing exceptional rugby again. Um, and yeah, uh, I think he's a great person and I know when he comes on the field on Saturday, he'll bring a lot of energy and a lot of positivity and um, hopefully, touch wood, that's all his bad luck done and he can go from strength to strength and um, finish his career without any injuries again. Hi there, Sarah Orch of BBC. This is one for all three of you. Um, I don't know if you could hear at the back, Sia, particularly talking about you, Eben, some wonderful words from him. But could you all just give us a little bit of a taste of what it's like being part of a squad that has Sia Khaleesi in it? Because he continues to be such a superstar at the moment on the world stage, particularly when you're all probably sat on the bus or in the change room waiting for him to finish his autographs. Um, yeah, obviously it's... It's, uh, I don't know how other teams are, so it's quite difficult to say. Um, being in Japan, obviously the Japanese players that I play with at my club um, are quite big in Japan, but um, yeah, Sia obviously is known across the whole world. Um, sometimes I feel a bit, I wouldn't say sorry for him, but because his energy is so good and he's so giving, um, he... He's very selfless and he takes a lot of his own time to make other people happy. Um, uh, I know very few people like that um, and that goes a long way. I think a lot of the players see it every single day. Um, you'd have the worst day possible in, not, I wouldn't say the worst day, um, but his body would be very sore, he'd be mentally tired um, and you'd always find a way um, to make someone else feel happy. Um, so yeah, I, I think we are very lucky, we're very privileged to have him in the squad and um, I know we'll all be very close with him after rugby as well and I'm looking forward to to those moments afterwards as well. So um, yeah, that's yeah, the way I'd sum him up, but yeah. yeah. For me, I think the three of us actually played um, with Sia from under 19, um, which is also quite special. Um, He's a special, special guy to have in, you know, to have in our environment as our leader. Um, really look up to him, and yeah, I think it's like Damien said, a privilege to have him with us. Yeah, um, we. I think we in a squad we don't see him as, as that superstar. We see him as a, a guy that's that's close to us that we've known since since a young age, and obviously he's a superstar and. Which he is to the to the people and the communities and and the work he does. Um, but for us, he's we've now known, known him since, like I said, under 19 and played with him. He's a friend to us and yeah, just just a normal person who who enjoy, enjoys a, a silly joke and some stupid laughter. Um, but yeah, for for us, it's it's great. And I think one thing about Sia on the pitch because people talk a lot about him off the off the field, but on the pitch, like the work rate and the amount of work he does that, that people or the normal fan at home won't, won't see or won't um, know actually what a difference he makes cleaning those, those outside breakdowns to make the guys, the backline guys like, like a Kirtley and a Chesna Shine. The amount of work he does there is, is incredible and, and the unseen work, his work ethic on the field and his work rate is, is really, um, it's actually for me an underrated player for, for what he does for us as a team. Um, question for um, France, um, Nick Mullins from ITV Sport. Uh, take us into the scrum on Saturday night. What is it? What does it feel like? What does it? What does it smell like? Why do you? Why do you get out of bed every morning to do this strange thing? You want to come with? Love to. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's obviously a, a, a very physical thing. Um, it's obviously very very tough. I said earlier in another interview, and this is a massive cliche, but it's really all eight. It's really the old pack. And I think front rows and Uka will always scrum because they in the front line. But when you get the back fives buy in and for them to, um, to, to, to scrum and really give 
all their 100% effort and for them to realize the potential that lies in everyone buying in is really special. So a lot of credit to them. Um, you know, without the guys behind us, we'll get scrummed every time. And I think it's just a, a hats off to the guys, um, the back five, giving that effort every time. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Um, I know you don't like talking about individuals, and, and I know it's a team effort. But talk to us a bit about Franco Morstad. I think is one of the players that most fly under the radar on this team. Yeah, Franco is a absolute workhorse. Um, unbelievable player, unbelievable person. Uh, I think the amount of work he does on the field is is unmatched. Uh, I think the number of collisions and efforts and battles he gets into a game is. It's really incredible and yeah, just how he throws his body around. Um, normally a lock is about 120 kgs, but I've, I think he is uh, just under 110. But I mean, he plays like a 140 kg lock, the way, the way he goes around the field and his uh, intellect in the lineouts and working out plans. Obviously, um, him and Archie doing that for us. It's, it's incredible the work they do and just to make sure we get the right options. So yeah, I mean, Franco is a a team man. I think there's if there's one guy on a team that, that no one will ever uh, dislike is probably Franco because he's just always up for a laugh and, and always just ready to work and, and give his all for the team. Thank you very much, guys. Um, that's the end of our news conference. We started a little bit early, so uh, we are well on time. Thank you so much. Have a good one. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers.